Today we're going to paint our Louisiana clay sculptures with some Mardi Gras colors, green, violet, and gold. I'm going to show you an example of painting yours today. Remember, we hold our paintbrush like a pencil right behind the silver part and we grip it like a pencil. We don't grip it like this. We don't hold it at the top or the middle, but right behind the silver part, which we call the danger zone. So our hand won't get in danger of getting paint. And look at the little tiny bit of paint that I got on my brush. I'm not dipping the entire bristles in the brush and I'm definitely not getting any paint on the silver part or the danger zone. When you're painting your sculpture, you're gonna paint your um, Louisiana shape, whether it's a state shape, a mask, a crawfish, an alligator, a fleur-de-lis or something else with one color and then you can paint your heart with a second color. When you're painting, make sure that you spread your brush onto the clay just like you would be sweeping the floor if you were sweeping with a broom. When you paint over texture like this one, because this is a textured part, it's not flat, you're gonna have a lot of bumps and cracks. So make sure that you go over those bumps and cracks with your brush, even if you need to re-dip and get in the areas. You don't wanna see any more white clay. You wanna try to cover up those areas and you're gonna paint right over your holes. And if you use a tiny bit of paint like Miss Downey did, don't worry if it covers up your hole a little bit because it'll pull it fall to the um, bottom and it won't stick or clog the holes, okay? Also, since this is a sculpture, it's got three dimensions to it. It's got a side to it. So make sure you paint the sides of your sculpture. We're not gonna paint the back, but we're just gonna paint the sides and the front. When you're going around your heart, be very careful so that you don't get the first color on your heart. You might even need to turn your brush sideways when you get close to the heart. If you get a little bit on the heart, that's okay. Just try not to let it happen a lot. Make sure you get into those white spaces with your brush. If you can't get into every single little white space, that's okay. My paint is metallic paint. That means it looks a little glittery. It looks extra shiny. It's gonna be beautiful on our sculptures. These sculptures can hang like an ornament. They don't have to hang from a tree though. They can hang from a nail on your wall or from a hook anywhere, and they can be displayed anywhere in your home to brighten up a space or a room. I'm gonna keep going around so that I'm painting the sides all the way around, and I'm painting close to that heart, and I'm trying not to get on the heart or too close to it so that I can leave my heart for another color. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I painted the sides because we don't wanna forget that. And when I lifted it up, I see that I forgot some little white spaces on the bottom. Now, I'm gonna give you two brushes and the tiny brush is gonna be for your heart. I used a bigger brush for my big part of my sculpture. And one color for your sculpture, another color for your heart. It can be any of the choices. So that means one of the colors are not gonna be used by you since we're only using two colors. I like to paint the top of my heart first without touching my sculpture because it's still wet. And then if I can, without lifting it, I can probably paint a lot of the side of the heart, okay? And if I have to, I'm gonna lift it when it's time, paint the sides of the heart very carefully. I love it. These are so wonderful, just like our wonderful state of Louisiana. I'm gonna speed up the next part while I paint another sculpture to give you another example of using two colors and then it's your turn.
your paint is dry, Miss Dalmy is going to use India ink and water to dunk your sculpture in to give it an antique finish and to cover up those little white spots that you didn't quite get to. So when it's done, I'm going to dunk it in the ink, but don't worry, I'm going to shake it off and dry off as much of the ink as I can so that your beautiful metallic colors show through and you can still see a glittery, shiny finish. Now we're gonna prepare our beautiful sculptures for hanging, like an ornament or in a wall decoration. So I'm gonna show you what to do with these bendy wires and some beads. The first thing you're gonna do is choose three beads for your sculpture. Or you could choose one or two or none. You don't have to have beads, but we're not doing more than three. So if you have four or five, that's too many. One, two, or three, and then you're gonna choose a colored wire, and then we're gonna put our beads on our wire like that. Make sure they kinda of hang out in the middle so that it'll be easier for the next step. Now, you're gonna find those little holes that Miss Dalmy made after your sculpture was done, and you're gonna put the wires in from the front. You might wanna hold your beads while you do this so they don't fall off. Here's the front of my sculpture. I'm putting the wire through this hole on the left, then I can let my beads fall. And then I'm putting the right side through the right side hole over here. Okay, and then we're gonna pull them out to the back just a little bit. I went through the front and I have a little bit hanging out from the back and that's what I want. This is what the back might look like. I'm holding the wires so they don't fall through the holes, okay? So I do have a little bit extra hanging off. The reason is because we have to wrap these wires around each other because if we leave it just like this, the wire will fall out, your sculpture will not be able to hang like an ornament. So after I stick it through the front and I have some sticking out from the back, I'm going to bend my wire to the top, kind of like I'm making a rainbow over my sculpture. And then I'm going to take my back piece and wrap it around the front piece so they'll be attached, okay? Might wanna move my beads out the way when I'm working on one side. And if I need a little bit of extra, I can pull a little extra, but I still need to have a rainbow shape over my sculpture. And then I'm gonna take my wires and just wrap them around each other, twisting the back piece around the front piece. That way my wires will stay on and it won't slip through the holes. Now I'm gonna move my beads over to the other side of the rainbow, turn it sideways so you can see. I'm gonna pull a little extra because it was kind of short. If it's too short, pull a little extra and then just use your fingers to wrap the little piece around the rainbow like that. Now it's, and you can put your beads any way you want and it's ready for hanging. Look how cute. I'm gonna show you how to do this step one more time in case you need another set of directions and then it's your turn. All right, remember, we're putting three beads on the wire first or two or one or none if you choose. You cannot have four or five. Place your beads carefully on the wires that you choose. And then we're going to find the two holes from the front of your sculpture. I like to hold my beads while I'm doing this so they don't slide off. We're gonna put the wire in the left hole first and then the other side of the wire in the right hole. And then we're gonna bring our wire up to make a rainbow shape, making sure that we have some extra wire that's shorter hanging from the back. Then we're gonna bend the wire up to stand tall and vertical, move your beads around if they get in the way. Then we're gonna wrap the back piece, the little wire around the rainbow, two or three times if you can. This is tough, so be patient with yourself and don't give up. Then I like to move my beads over so they won't get in the way and I'm wrapping the right side. Back of the wires wrap around the front of the rainbow. I just love these.